So this past seven days, we hit our most recent addition to the Me Too movement. And at this point, after seeing this for a year and a half, it's like, this is clearly going to change how people interact. And I think that's exactly what the left wants. It's exactly what the communists want. That's exactly what the Marxists want. They want us to not interact in the way that we're interacting, because if we interact like we're interacting now, their opinions aren't very popular. Social justice opinions and Marxist opinions are a very, very small part of the population. They're a fringe movement. And you can tell they're a fringe movement because when you know, companies like Gillette or companies like, you know, I guess, Procter, Procter & Gamble or Nike or any sort of big company takes on a leftist message, people fucking hate it. And the only way they're going to get them to follow suit with the commercials is to make sure that their lives are exactly as miserable as the people who produce those commercials or as the people who fight to get those commercials produced. And so the way you do that is you have to break down the culture. This is why before you get things like Nazism or Marxism or fascism, they all take away religion. They all take away philosophy. They, or they even inject stupid things like postmodernism where, you know, people are saying that facts don't exist and all the, the gender identities and all this shit like that. Cause they're doing that to break down society. Cause if they don't break it down, you won't accept, you won't accept their program. Because, well, again, we've seen that these programs are very, very unpopular in the public eye. So this case of Me Too is just another example of that, where they're ta they've taken extreme examples like Harvey Weinstein and, and Bill Cosby, and they say, now the normal person is basically just as bad as Bill Cosby and Harvey Weinstein if they do these particular behaviors. And they've done this in a lot of communities. They Well, they always do this. This is the oldest trick in the book. They take, a, if you want to ban guns, here's what you do. You take a person who's a school shooter, uh, someone who's a crazy person, and you say every gun owner is like this school shooter, even though school shoot. Well, I mean, more people die in high school football than school shootings. Or they take abortions. They say every single case of abortion, the mother was was in danger of death. When in reality, only a very, it's like it was like one. I, I did the math on this about a year or two ago when I was having a conversation with somebody about this. The math on it, it's like 1.8 percent of abortions are you know undue harm to the mother. Most abortions are people who just don't want to have kids. So they take the extreme example and they apply it as the normal example and they do this with literally everything. Oh, one more thing I forgot is the, the Alex Jones thing. They said Alex Jones is this crazy conspiracy theorist who uh, said that Sandy Hook was a lie and he caused all the, the trauma in these kids. And so, oh, okay, may maybe. I don't think Alex Jones did anything wrong, but maybe you have a point. He's, he's the craziest of us. And then months later, they went after Sargon. They went after Milo. They went after a ton of other people who were um, just people with differing opinions. And Alex Jones was one of those people as well. He just had a different opinion. He was just a little bit more crazy about it. So in this case, in this case of Me Too, we have a voice actor, Vic Mignogna. If you don't know who that is, you might recognize some of the properties he's from. He's from uh, Full Metal Alchemist. He played Edward, El Edward Elric in Full Metal Alchemist. Or he more recently... He played uh, Brawley in Dragon Ball, probably a, a very successful movie, by the way, that just came out. I think it made $100 million in the box office. So uh, good on Funimation for doing that. But Vic Mignogna was accused of extremely, extremely innocuous behavior. What you might consider friendly, what you might consider, by the way, Vic Mignogna is a, is a pretty devout Christian. Or, well, maybe he wouldn't define himself by Christianity, but certainly he's a very... Um, a very avid believer in the Bible. He mentions before in some of his, his con speeches that he doesn't, it's convention speeches, that he doesn't follow religion, but he does follow the word of God. So Christian, or Christian ideal person, and he's just doing very, very Christian type behavior. Because when you go to a church, as I, I grew up as, as sort of a Christian, is everything's very personal. It's not just say, hello, how are you? Say, hello, how are you? You, you shake their hand, you say, peace be with you. It's, it's very, very much about physical contact. And there's a reason it's about physical contact, because if you can physically connect with somebody, you can also connect with them more verbally and more mentally. It's that, that same Piaget thing that I've talked about in, in some other videos, is that you, if you're going to have a psychological concept, you have to act it out physically, and the physical action of connection is a handshake, or maybe it's a hug. Or maybe it's um, that European thing where they kiss each other on the cheek and stuff like that. And so Vic Mignogna was essentially accused of sexual assault for doing things like this. Oh, well, let's, let's talk about the first one because that's an easier one. He was accused of being a homophobe first. Somebody, one of his fans brought up some, some yaoi, which is a code for anime porn of, of two men. Uh, Yuri would be the, the lesbian porn. 
And he said, I don't want to sign that. And he said he didn't want to sign it because it was not canon. That may or may not be true, but it seems to be because he has a fan club. And in his fan club Discord server, you're not allowed to talk about Yaoi or Yuri or Hentai because he doesn't want a bunch of porn in his fan club. So basically what this person did is they came up to him and said, hey, sign my porn. And he said, I'm not signing your porn. Now he's a homophobe. The second accusation will be taken from an article by Anime News Network. And by the way, Anime News Network, who, you know, I've been, I've been sort of into anime for the past 15 years or so. Yeah, you know, I was a devout fan very, very, when I was very, very young. In fact, I even met Vic Mignogna when I was in high school. Very, very nice guy, by the way. And, uh, you know, I've been on and off, you know, listening, looking at Anime News Network for information. And after seeing this article, fuck you, Anime News Network. How dare you do shit like this? You're taking somebody who has not done really anything wrong and you're making them out to be a pedophile and a, an all around terrible person. Cause the second, uh, set of allegations was sexual assault. And what they've done here is, is as I described before, they've taken behavior that is normal, friendly behavior and said it was rape. Cause that's what they're trying to conflate here. It's like that, that big, big feminist research paper that said that, well, 20% of women on college campuses get raped. No, it's not 20% of women get raped. Rape is a violent crime. Rape is, you know, you, you, you beat some chick over the head in the alleyway, and then you take her pants off and you have sex with her. That's rape. An unwanted kiss is not rape. An unwanted hug is not rape. An unwanted handshake is not rape. There is a reason that rape is a crime, and there is a reason that child molestation is a crime, because the action of child molestation and the action of rape has a lasting effect on a victim for likely the rest of their life. Most people who are victims of child molestation never get over it. Most people who are victims of rape never get over it. And so this is a very, very serious thing, and, and to, to, to conflate a hug or to conflate in friendly behavior with rape is absolutely disgusting. And what an insult to people who have actually been raped. So this is not rape, this is not child molestation, because it's not going to produce any sort of lasting psychological imprint that will harm their life. All that's going to happen is that they may have said, well, that was a little bit weird, and then they're going to immediately get over it and get on with the rest of their day. So what this article is trying to do is accuse Vic of being a pedophile. The first example of... I would guess innocuous behavior. By the way, if you're, if you're at the head of a massive line, you know, a lot of times I've been to conventions before. I, I used to go, you know, you know, when I was in high school, like maybe 14 to 18 or so. And these lines are fucking massive. And especially for a voice actor like Vic Mignogna, Vic Mignogna is a huge voice actor. He is in pretty much everything. Like the only people who are bigger than him are maybe like Crispin Freeman and, and Steve Bloom in terms of voice actors, but he's a pretty big voice actor. So he's probably been at, at the point of this photo, probably been answering or uh, signing photographs and doing things all day. And so they mentioned that the person in this photograph is 14 years old and her face is uh, rightfully blanked out. Thank you for doing that. Uh, that's, that's one good credit to anime news network. Cause you, well, you shouldn't uh, post pictures of minors with their parents consent and they probably didn't get it. But so he gives this girl a hug, a, a type of hug that he gives every single fan, and she happens to have a jacket unzipped, and his hand maybe misses the outside of her jacket and goes inside the jacket. I don't know why this is such a big deal, because if she hadn't been wearing a jacket, his hand would just be around her waist. It's not like he's trying to grab her ass or anything like that. It's not like, it, even, if he, even if he flicked his wrist downward, his hand is so high up that he would never reach any sort of sexual area. Now for this next part, you kind of have to consider... Uh, Vic Mignogna's fan base, and, yet, and I have to put this in context or it doesn't make that much sense, is that girls are crazy over Vic Mignogna. He's certainly very, very socially fluent. He's certainly very uh, personal. And so it, it makes sense that a lot of girls would go after him. And so one of the moves that he does is that he goes for a hug and then he goes for a kiss on the cheek. Not a big deal. And by the way, most of the fans that are fans of Vic Mignogna absolutely fucking love this. Not only do most of the fans love it, but if you look at the, the court of public opinion, so I'll post a little image on the screen that, that kind of discusses this. Taylor was 18 when she attended Colossicon in Sandusky, Ohio, 2013. She was feeling ill when she got up that morning, but decided to still tag along with her friend to Mignogna's autograph line. She wasn't an avid fan of Mignogna, but her friend was. So she went so her companion would get 
a second item signed. Eh, pretty common, but a pretty common idea. When it came to their turn, Taylor said that Mignogna told her she was adorable. She didn't think much of that statement, and when he asked her if she was wanted a signed photo, she thought, why not? He embraced her for a photograph, and when the moment was over, Taylor said he hugged her and then proceeded to kiss her face. Onlookers cheered. So if this has been a terrible case of sexual assault, a terrible case of rape, a terrible case of foul play, wouldn't every guy or every woman, by the way, anytime there's a real sexual assault, anytime there's anything bad happening to a female, everybody, everybody comes in to help. Any sort of thing, even if a man is yelling at a woman or being a little bit, you know, high pit or a little bit, um, a little bit um, high, high energy, people will come up to rescue her. So she had plenty of people watching. She probably, maybe it could be, let's say at least, this is a very conservative estimate, at least 100 people watching this thing happen. And nobody had a problem with it. And the reason nobody had a problem with it is because it's not a big deal. Like look in Europe. If you're in Europe, a common way to greet people, a common way to greet a female is to hug her and then give a, a, a kiss on the left and the right cheek. Kissing someone on the cheek is not sexual behavior. It's just a greeting. It's just friendly. But the leaders of the Me Too movement don't want things like that because any sort of appropriate physical contact, again, not sexual, friendly contact, is there to set people to be more bonded to other people and there to create better relationships. So a handshake, a hug, the, the European kiss on the cheek thing. Those are all things that help socially bond you to the person that you're talking to so that if anything bad happens, you'll actually help them out. Because you have a, you've had a physical connection. Again, not a sexual connection. You know, a hug, a friendly kiss on the cheek or hand or forehead or anything. Like that. These are all just uh, nonverbal communicators of connection. And over this innocuous behavior, they've basically taken Vic to the cleaners. He has been fired from Funimation. He has been fired from Rooster Teeth. All of his conventions in 2019 that have not occurred already, uh, basically he, he's been canceled. And they basically ruined his career. And this whole thing is disgusting. Even like his professional colleagues like Neil Kaplan are sitting there on Twitter trying to defame Vic Mignogna. They're trying to say, well, Vic Mignogna was late to a panel that I was doing. Therefore, he's a rapist. This whole thing is just disgusting. And we have to see the Mood 2 movement as a win by the feminists. They won this. They won the ability to falsely accuse, clearly. Because even people like Christine Ford, who was completely falsely accusing uh, Kavanaugh of raping her, got away with it. Plenty of other situations where people have falsely accused or, or taken innocuous behavior and said it was the worst thing in the world, even the Harvey Weinstein stuff. Now, Harvey Weinstein may have actually been accused of rape and may actually have been convicted of rape. I haven't followed it that much, but there were a lot of women who accused him of rape because they made a deal and they didn't like that their careers were over after the deal. So I, I had sex with Harvey Weinstein. He made me a big star. I'm not a big star anymore because I'm 50. Well, fuck Harvey Weinstein. So they got away with it with that. If we let them get away with this anymore, they're going to keep doing it. They're going to go from the people who are the worst of us and they're going to start attacking the best of us, which they've already started doing. So the only way around this is to start saying no to everybody, even the people that you hate. Certainly you can change some of your behavior, but I don't know how much of your behavior should be changed. Should, should we not be allowed to, to greet women with a hug anymore? Should we not be allowed to handshake anymore? Should we not be allowed to have normal fucking conversations? I don't know if we can comply to that. Because if we comply to that, we destroy any sort of human connection that we would have, and then we, we lose. But at the very least, and especially as, as a, a part of the, the uh, MGTOWs, is that we say no. I want due process. Innocent until proven guilty. And so until this person has been, been convicted in a court of law, they are technically innocent. And we can't sit here and destroy people's careers over just an accusation. Certainly there are people who deserve their careers to be destroyed, but those people need to be done, need, it needs to be done so after a conviction. Not, not this nonsense where, where he doesn't want to sign yaoi porn because he's a Christian or because he, he kissed some girls on the cheek as a friendly kiss or hugged people friendly 
in, in a friendly way. This is, this is again, this is just gross, and I'm going to keep repeating myself, so I guess I'll just end the video. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. See you in the next time. Bye.